say everything's okay. Hello, I'm Alana Levine, host of Little Known Facts. I've always been inspired by people who love what they do. On this podcast, I speak with actors who you love to watch do what they love to do. Little known fact about my guest today. He was a terrible limo driver, constantly getting lost and running out of gas. Good thing he became an actor. Welcome Mad Men's John Slattery. Everything's okay. Congratulations on Mad Men. Oh, thanks. Well done. You were very good. Like I, like I, that was really all me, too. <laughs> I was, was like, I am to be congratulated for that. You should, because you wrote it and you directed it and That's you right. starred in it and you played a lot of parts at once. You're I cooked like, it all up out of my. I wrote it in the Beverly Hills uh, Public Library. It's crazy. Uh, and then you like fifteen years ago sent just, it in a Manila envelope with a stamp to AMC, and they bought it. And Matt Weiner intercepted who? it. I'm sorry, who? And he, yeah, and then he put his name on it. That is so That's, uncool. I, it's. I am so I'm, mad at him. I am so furious. I am mad at him. Yeah. And we're not to speak of it again. We're done. Yeah, I just decided that I was going to take the high road and let him get all the credit for it. That's so sweet of you. It hasn't been easy. All these uh, awards that he's gotten should be mine. So that's why every time they say, and the winner is, I see you like start to stand up. And then you're like, oh, yeah. no, I and can't. I'm going to. Yeah. I have a question for you. Speaking of awards. Yeah. You were just in Spotlight, which won the Oscar for I, best movie in the world right now. <laughs> let's let's be honest. Best movie in the world. Best movie yeah. in the world. Yeah, <clears throat> it, it's right. Amazing. Tom McCarthy is an old friend of both of ours. Mm -hmm. Kind of staggering and amazing yeah. that he did such a thing. Incredible. Incredible. Yeah. Do you, when you are an actor in a movie that wins best movie in the world, <laughs> um, do you get an Oscar? Yeah. Has it arrived? No, I'm only kidding. You don't get an Oscar. You don't? What, no. do you, what do you get, like a certificate? Like, I don't even know if you like get a certificate. Like on field day? You know, on field day, everybody gets like, great job participating. You get a half a blue ribbon. You get <laughs> not even a full ribbon. You get like a half a one. Um, fourth place. Congratulations. Good for you. This is America. That's as good as first place. Yeah. Good for you. You, you were there. You were so in that movie. Um, you really were so in that movie. You were so magnificent in that movie. Nice. I've watched it more than once. Are yeah, you Catholic? Did you grow up Catholic? I did, yeah. I was an altar boy the whole bit. Yeah. yeah. So um, I don't know you as a practicing Catholic. No, I haven't been forever. Uh, it's basically as soon as I got my driver's license and said, okay, I'm off to church. And right. Went the other <laughs> and did direction. It. Didn't go. Um, no. Do no. you remember when we went to, was it Gilgo? Yeah. Do you remember when I got stuck in the I, ocean? I, I, <laughs> I wish that we had that on film. Could you, you describe were, yeah, to I'm the, audience describe what, the audience what happened and what it looked like? So Alana is swimming like, you know, like old ladies swim, like with uh, with their toes up, you know, in the, she's sort of circling her hands. She's underwater up to like, you know, her, her shoulders and her toes are up like old ladies do. And all, and we're standing on the beach. It's the 4th of July, drinking a beer and then all of a sudden, not even a wave, but like the, a swell came up. So she went from sort of, if you're standing on the beach, she's, you know, like waist high because she's a little down, you know, the, 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 the cant of the beach in the water. And then all of a sudden she rises up to over my head. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm standing there drinking this beer. And all of a sudden I was like, oh, look, Alana's above my head now. And she's still... And she's still with the toes in the water, like like doing this, but like looking back over her shoulder toward where she was bound to land. And then this thing deposits her on the beach in about six inches of water. But the, all the like about 150 gallons of water land on you. You you were wearing like a mas, uh, machino machino bikini. It was a good bikini. And you landed with the force of like a, you know, I mean, all that water, and. I literally, I remember thinking, I w I'm looking up at you, and I thought, it was so slow, it was so slow, sort of slow motion, that I have time to get my camera, that I thought I could reach down, it was before cell phone cameras, yes. that's how long ago this was, yes. and I could reach down onto the towel and shoot the picture of you <laughs> above my head before you landed, and you were literally like, ooh, 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 ooh. and you landed, <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, you were landed like three feet from everybody. We were standing there like eating potato chips, and you were so traumatized by this. It was unbelievable. 
And 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 you spent the rest of the Fourth of July in the car. You went in and sat in the car. We were we were having a cookout, and we were like, "Where's the law? Oh, she's in the car. She wants to leave." He had like your bag on your lap. And you were ready to go. Because in my experience of it, first of all, it was literally like I was in a dryer. Like I've been put in you, it, it, totally. I mean, it, 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 it's unbelievable that you could be three feet away and having an entirely different experience <laughs> than us going. Oh, look at Alana; she's up in the air. But I was trying. I was trying <laughs> desperately to signal to you guys. <laughs> right? I know. You, You're all like, waving help, at me. Catch me! Something. It was. It was, and you landed like on the back of your neck. <laughs> I mean, it was like with feet up in the air, and I mean, it was unbelievable. I think it's the craziest water event of my life but i just want to say uh maybe this will help with sponsorship for me in the future that that bathing suit stayed on <laughs> and it did. those it. m's they were like the, like a <laughs> gold m on the sides of your and yes, you, you and know little, like, for those of you that don't know alana was pretty well put together it still is but but this was back in the day back in the day when uh, yeah that thing was uh was was not going anywhere oh that was so funny you know the the funny thing about it, we talk about it all the time. Whenever because we're at the beach a fair bit, and so we're like, "Remember Alana? Was like, Look, I'm Alana." <laughs> and we're and it was that it was when when the water receded, you were literally in like a puddle of water. And so it was <laughs> a traumatic event, understand. but you weren't like way out in the ocean. No, but it's as if I were in my own bathtub. <laughs> it was literally was... happened in the the tub. It was amazing. <laughs> I'm trying to explain <laughs> that my experience of it was completely, and then to come out and be like, "Hey guys, I don't know if you noticed, yeah. but like a minute ago, we died, you guys." And we're like <laughs> literally eating the same potato chip, watching the whole thing happen. Well, uh, yeah. So oh, that's it. We're that done. Good. Thank yeah, you that for was coming good. in. Oh, my pleasure. See that you later. Was amazing. Oh, you're a great athlete, and I imagine oh, as a kid. Um, Athletics, where you grew up, wide open spaces, a more suburban mm-hmm, scenario. Right. Yep. Um, one of six kids. kids yep. Are yeah. they all in Newton still? No, uh, they're in. My parents uh, split the uh, the you know summers in in Situate, Massachusetts, right. which is on the South Shore. Right. Beautiful town uh, where we grew up, going to the beach, and uh, they go to Florida in the winter. So how did you go from a kid who I imagine is a jock, at least that's my fantasy of you, Half assed, kind to of, kind of. a kid who ended up in the theater department? Like, what was that um, journey for you? The, um, I was a, a television uh, fanatic and movies. I would go to the movies. That's all we did was go to the movies. We'd get somebody to take us to the to one theater or another where, you know, they were sprinkled around, you know, the mall or whatever. Yeah. Um, uh, we would do that and spend all day in the theater, and, you know, go from one movie to another, sneaking in the movie. You know, it was so much That's easier to, to do all that stuff. legal. <laughs> it's not legal. We sneaked, we w- would sneak in everywhere. That's all we did. We never had any money. And we, so we would just go and figure out scams to sneak in ballparks and movie theaters and stuff. Right. Um, and then I would watch TV all the time. I never did my homework. I never did. I I played sports, but I wasn't that serious about it. I I wasn't. I was. I I could kind of play everything, but not. I wasn't a star at anything, and so I nobody cared whether I showed up or, or you know. I could. It was just another guy who could fill a slot. Um, and I enjoyed all that, but I I so then I would go home and watch TV and stay up till four in the morning and watch old movies and. And then drive everybody crazy in my house because I couldn't get up the next morning, and and and, and they were just like screaming, so it was, yeah, screaming, screaming and yelling, "Your yeah. rides in the driveway!" <laughs> and, and, and then yeah, I, I don't know. And then I and then I I, I did you I, do I, plays in high school? No, we didn't have any theater department. We had. I went to this little high school that is now moved to another location and become much more. Um, you know, it's just a fancy prep school. It was. I had the same teachers my dad had. I had these guys, like, one of them was a guy named Monsignor Keating, James Keating, who was the chaplain for the Boston Fire Department, who would wear his fire boots. His nickname was Boots, and he had my father for a student. He used to drive my father to school when when my dad was a kid. My dad and my uncle, my mother and my father grew up across the street from each other, and this guy used to pick them up 
and drive them to school and like and he was still teaching when I was there and my friends fathers were in my dad's class and this was a tiny little school so um, did you feel like 25 years later he still had passion for his job or was he pretty sleepy by the no, time he, he, he was, was here? a great guy he 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 would te- he taught modern european history and he would um you know, he'd teach a little, and then he'd go, "Boys, we had a three alarm fire last night. I was up to my armpits and burning flesh." Oh my god! And then he and then he'd describe that, and you know, he'd go off and all boys. You were in an all and boys small, school. like a, a, I don't know, fifteen kids. There were two. There was a standard and an honors class. <laughs> Guess which one I was in? Oh, I know uh, which one you were in. And 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 um, yeah, and then we we were you know a bunch of characters, and 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 it was a weird little school. Are you friends with anybody still that you went to high school with? You know, I live in New York, and they live wherever they live. And um, do you want to give your address out? Day day, (laughs) four eleven Hauser Street. Uh, Doogie Hauser Street. (laughs) Wait, that was that Archie Bunker's Hauser. Trying to yeah. Anyway, um, that was Archie Bunker's address. Uh, He lived in Queens. We yeah, we keep in touch. So after you went to Catholic University. You came to New York, and I feel like, will you forgive me if I'm wrong, but I feel like you lived, like, with carny people in Coney Island or something. <laughs> I didn't or live, what? I did, I, I lived were, with a guy you were who, I, in the who freak shall show? remain nameless. Okay. He was sort of a, he could have been in the freak show. Yes. Which is why he'll remain nameless. Yes. Because I can talk about him. Okay. Um, I used to call him <laughs> the pink boneless hamster. He was but, the weirdest little dude to me. He looked like what a, a baby hamster would look like. You know those little babies. How did you even meet him? We went to college together, and 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 we weren't exactly tight, but you know you sort of close knit the theater department at at uh, school, and then we did this tour, um, a company called the National Players, and mm-hmm. they would go out and you know do play do two plays. We did As You Like It and Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, and and they travel around to colleges, mostly high schools, colleges for like a year. Right. Around the country. Anyway, this guy was like, hey, if I ever got an apartment, you want to move in together? And I said, yeah, totally. sure, whatever. And then he actually called. I guess it was Gravesend. It's either Gravesend or Bensonhurst. It's kind of right on the line. Kings Highway and West 7th Street on the N train. Literally right on the N train on the fifth floor walk up. The, the train would go right by the window. It was like, that was like worse that Woody than Allen the Woody movie. Allen movie. Yeah. Well, worse because you were living with a... Blind, I was, ham- baby uh, hamster. He wasn't blind. I, mean, you, I didn't I mean, say anything about. Oh yeah, those, those things are blind. Pink. He he could see. So you came to New York and you. I had I got a job. Uh, I drove a limousine. Your, you did. Yeah. Were you ever scared? Did anyone try to hold you up? No, I drove a limousine for a for a minute for a state senator. Really? Forget his name. And I didn't know how to get anywhere. I didn't know. I lived here for like a, a no minute. GPS so he's back like, yeah, what the hell? You're terrible. Terrible. Let me let me drive. He was like, this isn't going to work out. No. When I got to New York, it was mostly waiting tables. Right. And then I got a job in a law firm. Were you- but it was a good job because there was a bunch of actors who were sort of shuffling papers around and doing all. So you could leave and go to an audience. You know, I took full advantage of that and ran around and did all every backstage audition. Is that how you started from like? Getting backstage because you probably didn't have an agent yet. Or I think did I you got a job out of backstage once. Did a you? really bad <laughs> production of uh, of of a Genet play called what the hell was it called? The, the you know I, 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 it wasn't the Maids, but it was something else. It was Death Watch, and it was uh, you know super grim French prison. Death Watch. I thought Death Watch was a musical. Did you ever do a musical? See, in junior high school, I was in the chorus of Bye Bye Birdie. That was my big debut. Do you want to sing? <laughs> hey, you, you wanna... stupid. Hey, you meathead. <laughs> What'd you have to go get pinned for? I remember this. I know. I'm not Did sure. Did you hear about Hugo? Did you hear about Hugo and Kim? Yeah, Hugo and Kim. I That's heard great. about Kim. I just knew it somehow. Hey, you stupid. I was calling right up. Hey, you didn't Can't talk to you now. Go with Daddy. <laughs> we should right. do it. We do should. Do you want to do... First of all, it's time for you to be in a play again. This is ridiculous. What's yeah. happening? What's it's, happening it's, with that? Uh, that is it Bye Bye Birdie? Is Bye Bye Birdie coming up? It's not Bye Bye Birdie, but it's going to happen. I can't say. It's not a, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm told to keep my, my mouth shut. Oh, we won't.